Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. As we have discussed all the basic relational algebra operations as well as some additional operations to that, today we will discuss about the extension of the relational algebra operation that is the generalized projection, all of the outer joints like left outer joint, right outer joint and full outer joint. And we will see on the examples that how to perform these operations and why it is useful for this operation on being handling a database in a real time constraint. <music> Extension of the relational algebra operation is always being done on the basic and additional algebra operations. Like we will use the projection operation, the selection operations the most. The first type of operation that is extension as an algebra is the generalized projection. The generalized projection is same as the projection operation but with the addition of aggregate function on any numeric value or a field or attribute in a relation. So now we will see what are the aggregate functions to use. We will use the sum function which will actually add up all the values of a field and then produce a single result. We can use the average or AVG that will take all the values of a field and give the average of that, the max one which will give the maximum value of a field, the minimum one for a mean and we can use a distinct or a count distinct keyword to use actually count the number of field values but not repeating. Say for we are having a city field which can be repeated names like Kolkata, Delhi multiple times. But at the time of counting the city names, we will consider each of the name only once at uniquely. So in this way, we will use the aggregate functions on the projection and the projection becomes a generalized projection. Now we will use examples and relations to exemplify our operations. Here we are having a relation credit info which is gives us the information about the customer, their credit card limitations and available balance. So first we have the customer name, then the credit they have already used and the maximum limit of their credit card. So using the aggregate function on the projection, we will calculate that how much available balance is there in their credit card. So for that we will use the query. So we are using a query that we are projecting the customer name and we are calculating the available balance. So we are actually performing the subtraction aggregate operation that is the limit subtracting with the credit. That the credit will be subtracted from the limit and it will be named as avail balance that is the available balance for the credit info of a customer and we can fetch it from the relation credit info. So the generalized projection is just like that. We are using an aggregate function as well as a renaming on the projection part predicate. So the resultant information relation will be So it will be the operation result of the generalized projection. Now to enhance on a more relation, we will introduce first grouping. So grouping can be done with the generalized projection and before that we can mention then on which field it is to be grouped the relation. 
So for generalized projection, now onwards we will see and use the capitalized G with the curvets. So it will look like this. So now the generalized projection will be this instead of the Greek capital letter pi. So we will see that how to use the grouping inside a relation. Now we can use this PT box relation for rest of our examples. So first we will see that how to calculate that what is the total salary of the part-time workers in a factory. So here is the employee name, branch name and salary of all the part-time workers. So one need to calculate what is the total expenditure on a part-time worker salary on a factory. So we need to give a projection operation on the salary, but by summing it up into a single assault. So we can use the generalized projection with the aggregate function sum on the field salary of the relation PT walks. So can we have single result of summing up all these values to the expenditure of the factory's platinum workers salary. Now, if we want to do that branch wise, how to achieve that? Say I want the downtown, the Perry and the Austin departments expenditure on a part-time worker salary. So first we need to group the relation according to the need. Here the need is branch name. So first we need to group the relation according to the branch name and then perform the generalized projection on each of the branch name. So to do that, we need to just put the desired attribute on which the grouping is to be done before the generalized projection. So on this PT works, if we perform the query, so we are performing the grouping on the branch name on this relation. After that, we are performing the summing on the salaries on that particular branch name category. So first see what is the result of the grouped relation on PT works or the part-time workers. So this is result of the grouped relation PT works. Here I have grouped according to the branch name Perry, Downtown and Austin on the relation. Now I need to perform the sum salary on the PT works. And I want the CS name and also the salary of the summation into the account name. So it will look like this. As see, we are having only the branch name and the salary as the projection. So my resultant output will have only two columns like the branch name and the salary. So this is the output we will get by performing this query that we are having the branch name and the summation of the salaries of the part-time workers on that branch. Now, if I want to count what are the number of branches on the factory. So here, if we put on a count on this branch name, then we will have a result of seven. 
but actually we are having three bunches Perry, Downtown and Austin. So to get the desired result, we need to put a keyword count specified by a hyphen before any aggregate function that is using. So the count hyphen distinct will give us the duplicated value eliminated from the desired result. So now we are using a query to count the number of branches in this output. Here we are using a query that we are using the keyword count distinct on the branch name. So first we are making a unique branch name for each of the count and the result will be three for this query because there are three distinct branch name on the relation PT box. Now we will do something interesting that we will compose of more than one aggregate function on this generalized projection. That we will see on this platinum workers on the factory, we will fetch the department wise or branch wise total salary or expenditure as well as who is the highest earner on that branch. So we will use two of the aggregate function, one is the sum, another is the max salary to find out who is the highest earner on that branch. So the total resultant query will look like So here we are using the sum salary as the summation of the salary and the salary as the maximum salary that will name the highest earner on that branch. We can put the customer name also in here to fit that who is the highest earner. Here we are fetching only the details that what is the maximum salary paid to a customer on that factory on a part-time basis. So the resultant will be So this gives us an extra column using the generalized projection that is a maximum salary earned in each of the department. So that is the generalized projection on aggregate function. Now we will see that in terms of the definition how to define a generalized projection using a aggregate function. We need to keep in mind two things that all tuples in all relations if they are coming from the same relation, then they must be same in each of the generalized projection. And if the tuples or the attributes are coming from different relation, then they must be distinct while using a generalized projection. So we can sum it up like this. So here we are using the first grouping of every grouping can be done. This will be the primary grouping ordering. Next, after this grouping, this G2 will be grouped and like this to Gn. And for a generalized function, first the aggregate function F1, then F2, then Fn. It can be based on the same tuple or a different tuple. Like in the previous example, we have made it on the same attribute and we can make it also in a different attribute. And if it is coming for a single relation, then they must be distinct. And if it is coming from a joining or a natural join or a condition product of two relations, then it can come from for different couples. So now we will move to the next part of the extended relational algebra that is the most important part which is known as outer join. Outer join gives us the result of common relation having the attributes. 
So whenever two relations have some common attributes and the attributes have some common values, then we can fetch it in a single desired result of an outer join of two or more relations. So now we will see that how to perform an outer join. To exemplify the outer join, we will see two relation and then outer join it together. Here we are having two relations, one is EMP or the employee personal details such as employee name, the street name and the city name and another is the walks, their work related factory details like the employee name, branch name and salary. So now we will perform an outer join on these two relations. So the resultant relation if we full outer join on these two relations will be Now as I have mentioned that in outer join we will see all the attributes of two tables but not any duplicate values. So the employee name is common in both the tables so I put it once here and other than that the street and city attributes of employee table and the factory works table the beer name and salary that is the branch name and salary accordingly. Now, whatever has the common value between these two, we will put it in the outer join. That is basically an intersection of these two relations. So we will see what is the result. See, coyote is common in here and here. So we will put coyote. Next, rabbit is also there. Smith is in the employee table, but it is not present in the factory box table. So it will be not put in this resultant output of the outer join. Again, gets is in the factory box table, but not in the employee table, so it will be discarded also. Next comes John, which is present in both the relations, so we will put it in the resultant relation. So that is the result of this outer join on EMP and FT work. Now here we see that it is not commutative. If we put factory box in left and EMP in right, so the branch name and salary would have come first, then street and city. So the result will always be the same, but the ordering is slightly different because of changing the left and right part of the outer join. So that is the outer join. Now using these two tables, we will enhance the outer join on left and right outer join. So on left outer join, we will have all the values of the left table or the left relation. However, if some values are not present on the attributes, say for an example that Smith has got no information on its factory box, so it will be kept null on the left right outer join. And in the right outer join, same will happen, but the right table will have all his information. And along with this, gates will be missing its street in city, so it will be kept null. So let us see that what will be the result of left outer join and right outer join on these two relations. See here I have put 
first all the names of the left relation and then the relation that is being not matched with the right relation so gets is only in the right relation not in the left relation that is why i put it in the last now for this for relation we can get all street in city but for smith we will not get the right relation so the result will be now in the left outer join we can see that the gets has not got any, any result in the left relation so we have to eliminate it from the left outer join relation and only the relation that is present in only the left relation so the coyote street is so here i have used the value null for branch name and salary of smith so it is the result of the left outer join which is represented like so the left part is kept open for emb now as with the right outer join we can see that the right part will be kept open so that we will have all the information on the right relation and if that is not present in the left relation so we will keep it blank or put the value null see all the attributes of the right one as put but we have kept this one null because gets street and city information is missing now there is one more elaborative outer join that is known as full outer join as the name suggests in full outer join we will have all the values of left and right relation in our resultant relation and if the left relation is missing some of the attributes in the right then it will be kept null as well as the right relation values which some of the attribute is missing in left it will be also kept null so the full outer join on this relations will look like it will be named as now we will have all the values like we will put the left one values first and the eliminated values from the left outer join that is gets will be also put here see it's a full outer join because the right relation is missing with the smith values and the left relation is missing with the gates values so that is all for the outer join and the extended relational algebra operations thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikira and subscribe to ikira